Godric, a novel by Frederick Buechner. Chapter 3. How Reginald Asked, and Godric Answered, and the Blessed Virgin's Song. Edwin named you well, father, says Reginald, in his coddling lilt. I say, father my bum. A holy name for a babe born to be holy, he says. Fiddle my faddle, I say, or nothing at all in words, but something instead in the finger talk he doesn't know. He's better off not knowing, if he only knew. This God means God. That's plain as your nose. I mean no slight. The Rick in Saxon is rain. So God and Rick in some means God reigns, Godric. It means God reigns in you. It means when God comes down at last to weigh the souls of men, he'll not find Godric's wanting, Father Godric. Fetch me a bowl to puke in, I tell him. He's got in him such a honeyed way I'm ever out to sour it. Godric will have his little jest, says Reginald. So then I teach him other ways to read my name. God's God, for sure. You hit that square. But Rick is Erse for wreck, I say, not knowing Erse for Mars. God's wreck I be, it means. God's wrecked Godric for his sins. Or Godric's sins have made a wreck of God. Reginald throws up his hands, his palms as pale and soft as cheese. There's other ways as well, I say. Rip Godric up another seam, and what you get is go and drick. What's drick, says Reginald? A foul Welsh word not fit for monkish ears, I say. How great is your humilitas, father, Reginald says. I say, yet mother, not so great as my drick. Why is it that the best in him calls forth the worst in me? When were you born, father, he says, the year of my birth. What manner of man is John the Baptist when he visits you in dreams? Something between a goat and a Jew. Is it true you see what's happening years ahead and miles away, father? I see a man and a maid a tumble on your grave. They say the Blessed Virgin taught you songs. I open my mouth and cloak like one who's had his tongue snipped out for swearing false. Eck, eck, I sing, twiddling my eyelids like a beggar playing blind. When was I born? They say it was the year before the bastard William beached his Normans at Pen Pevensey, slaying Harold, with a sunset shaft shot through his eye, then stomping down the golden Wessex dragon in the mud. They tell that Harold's mother said she'd give its weight in gold to have the body of her son laid deep in holy ground, but William buried it instead in Saxon soil that Harold hallowed by his falling there. Then William up and had them crown him king at Westminster on Christmas Day, and when the Aveling joined with Dane and Scott to cast him out, Stark William marched his Normans north and harried the land from sea to sea. Men, women, children all, he put them to the sword in bitter cold. He slew their beasts and burned their crops and set aflame their towns until the folk cried mercy, and the land was his. Thus Godric first saw light at a dark time, and the manger of his birth was death. But all is light for Reginald. What do they know of dark and death, he and his brother Durham monks? St. Benedict would twitch inside his tomb to see them water down his rule. No wonder that the hands of monks are soft the way they've got them brewers, barbers, tailors, cooks to do their bidding and husbandmen to work their soil. No meat for monks unless they ail, says Benedict, so half the monks and more plead sick each day and gather in the misericord to stuff their mouths with mutton till the fat runs down. The loft, they call it, and mighty high and lofty are their ways. They copy their books and say their prayers, and if some wandering duke or prince comes by, they turn their cloisters to an inn to please his grace and bend their knees as deep as if to kiss my lord the bishop's ring. And it's the same soft Reginald that asks of John the Baptist what I've seen of him in, in dreams. I've seen a man all clad in rags and anger, still although a kinsman of our Lord, as well as a high saint. I've seen a shaft of light a slant through dark, a fierce lance tilted to the heart of things, a flail, a knout. How do you tell of such a one as John, to such as Reginald, who'd have him be a godly gelding like himself? Abide alone, John once told me. Make thy place in wilderness, as I did mine, that the Lord may house thee. Make roots and grubs thy only fare, that the Lord may feed thee. Make chilly weir thy Jordan, that the Lord may warm thee. Thus friendless, roofless, blue with cold, yet singing praise, the world may learn of thee the glory and the grace of God. I say, mark me now, Reginald, hear this. 
He sets down the eggs he's brought, and squats beside me in the straw, so he may catch the words he thinks will come out weak, because he thinks that Godric's weak and old as Adam's shoe. Write this down in your book, I cry with all the strength I have. Then see him clap his hands to his ears and rock back on his heels. But then he rocks back close again, for when I speak a second time, I barely mumble in my beard. Thus I play him like a fish. He looks a fish. His mouth's agape. His eyes are flat. I say, then if you want it, here's my life. You'd think it was the sacrament I tendered him, the seemly way he bows his head to hear. I say, I started out as rough a peasant's brat and full of cock a doodle do as any. I worked uncleanness with the best of them or worst. I tumbled all the maids would suffer me and some that scratched and tore like weasels in a net. I planted horns on many a good man's brow and jolly lads with tales about it afterwards. I took up peddling as my trade. I cozened and tricked the way a baker yeasts his loaves till they are less of bread than air. I passed off old for new. I let out pence at usury. I swore me false. A flatterer I was, a wanderer. I thieved and pirated. I went to sea. Such things as happened then are better left unsaid. Reginald's eyes are rolled up in his head, so all that shows is white. He crosses himself and, like a herring in a basket, gasps for air. Yet I've spared him things far worse for the sake of sparing Godric, too. I've spared him wasted Berkwin nibbling like a hare on grass and leaves. I've spared him William calling out along the darkened banks of Weir for what he'll never find. I've spared him two that lay as one in one another's arms and never spoke a word. There's much you're better not to know, I say. But know you this. No Godric's no true hermit, but a gadabout within his mind, a lecher in his dreams. Self-seeking he is, and a peacock proud, a hypocrite, a ravener of alms and dainty too, a slothful, greedy bear, not worthy to be called a servant of the Lord when he treats such servants as he has himself, like dung, like Reginald. All this and worse than this go say of Godric in your book. Poor Reginald's tears run trickling down his cheeks like tallow. He asks for sweet and bitters all he has from me. Have I no honeyed comb to take the taste away? Well, but say this also, if you like, I say. Say yes, it's true that Mary came. She came, though who knows why. Clad all in sky-blue mantling, with the crown of heaven on her head. She smiled at me. And then I raised up on one elbow in the straw and sang. Saint Mary, Virgin Dame. Mother of Jesu Christ, of God, his Lamb, take, shield, and do thy Godric bring, to thee where Christ is King. Our Lady, Maiden, Springtime's Flower, deliver Godric from this hour. For Aelred's sake I sang it to the monk he sent, and what I said to him is so. It was indeed the Blessed Virgin taught it to me 